Welcome to episode two of EasyBot's RTFM series, Audible Manuals. Today's episode is Clouds by Mutable Instruments. Overview. Clouds is a granular audio processor. It creates textures and soundscapes by combining multiple overlapping, delayed, transposed, and enveloped segments of sound taken from an audio recording buffer. Clouds differs from other granular Eurorack modules in that it focuses on the real-time processing of audio sources from your modular system itself, rather than the playback of pre-recorded samples from a storage device. It rewards the freezing, fragmentation, and dissolution of the unexpected instant, rather than the careful planning of what might very well not come. Installation Clouds is designed for Eurorack synthesizer systems and occupies 18 HP of space. It requires a negative 12 volt over positive 12 volt supply, 2x5 pin connector, drawing 10 milliamps from the negative 12 volt rail and 120 milliamps from the positive 12 volt rail. The red stripe of the ribbon cable must be oriented on the same side as the red stripe marking on the printed circuit board. About granular synthesis. Clouds continuously records the incoming audio into a short amount of sample memory. While recording time can reach up to 8 seconds by reducing the audio quality setting, you ought to feel very guilty every time you think of this as tape. Think of it as a space, a room. Using this recorded audio data, the module synthesizes a sonic texture by playing back short, overlapping segments of audio, also known as grains, extracted from it. Clouds allows you to control from which part of the buffer the grains are taken how long the grains are, at which speed or pitch the grains are replayed, how much overlap there is between the grains, density, whether the distribution of grains in time is constant or random, which envelope curve is applied to the grains, giving the impression of a rough or smooth texture. In addition, to create textures with a blurry feel, a diffuser, network of all-pass filters, like a reverb without a tail, can be applied. The module plays grains continuously at a rate determined by the density and size settings. A trigger input is also present to explicitly instruct the module to start the playback of a new grain. The maximum number of concurrent grains is quite large, between 40 and 60. This specificity brings clouds closer to the roots of granular synthesis and allows the synthesis of varied textures even from basic waveforms. There is indeed many more dimensions to granular synthesis than keeping a playback pointer moving through an SD card sample. It is possible at any time to freeze the audio buffer from which the grains are taken. In this case, the incoming audio is no longer recorded. Somehow, Clouds is the exact opposite of a sampler. By default, the module always samples the audio it receives, except when it is in the frozen state. Front Panel Controls a. Freeze button. This latching button stops the recording of incoming audio. Granularization is now performed on the last few seconds of audio kept in memory in the module. B. Blending parameter, audio quality button. Selects which of the blending parameters is controlled by the blend knob and CV input, or selects one of the four audio quality settings. C. Load Save button. See the Advanced Topics section. D. Grain Position. Selects from which part of the recording buffer the audio grains are played. Turn the knob clockwise to travel back in time. E and F. Grain Size and Pitch Transposition. At 12 o'clock, the buffer is played at its original frequency. G. Audio Input gain from negative 18 decibels to plus 6 decibels. H. Grain density. At 12 o'clock, no grains are generated. Turn clockwise and grains will be sown randomly. Counterclockwise and they will be played at a constant rate. The further you turn, the higher the overlap between grains. I. Grain texture. Morphs through various shapes of grain envelopes. Square boxcar, triangle, and then Han window. Past two o'clock, activates a diffuser which smears transients. J, blend knob. This multifunction knob is described in the blending parameters section. K, indicator LEDs. 
They work as an input VU meter. When freeze is active, they monitor the output level. Soft clipping occurs when the last LED is on. They can also indicate the quality setting, red, the function assigned to the blend knob, green, or the value of the four blending parameters, multicolor. Inputs and outputs. All CV inputs are calibrated for a range of plus or minus five volts. Voltages outside of this range are tolerated, but will be clamped. One, freeze gate input. When the input gate signal is high, stops the recording of incoming audio, just as latching the freeze button would do. Two, trigger input. Generates a single grain. By moving the grain density to 12 o'clock and sending a trigger to this input, clouds can be controlled like a micro sample player. An LFO or clock divider, or even a pressure plate, can thus be allowed to sow grains at the rate of your choice. Three and four, grain position and size CV inputs. Five, grain position, pitch, CV input with V by oct response. Six, blend CV input. Five, grain transposition, pitch, CV input with volt per octave response. Six, blend CV input. This CV input can control one of the following functions depending on the active blending parameter, dry wet balance, grain stereo spread, feedback amount, and reverb amount. Seven and eight, stereo audio input. When no patch cable is inserted in the right channel input, this input will receive the signal from the left channel. Nine and 10, grain density and texture CV inputs. 11 and 12, stereo audio output. Blend parameters. The blend knob can control one of these four settings, dry wet balance, stereo spread, amount of random panning or balance applied to the grains, feedback amount, reverb amount. To select which parameter is controlled by the blend knob and the blend CV input, press the blend parameter audio quality button. The current parameter is temporarily indicated by a green LED. When turning the blend knob, the color of the four status LEDs temporarily shows the value of the four blending parameters, from black when the parameter is set to its minimum value, to green, yellow, and then red for the maximum value. It could happen that the position of the knob does not match the value of the parameter, the curse of multifunction knobs. If this is the case, turning the blend knob clockwise causes a small increase in the value of the parameter, and turning it further causes larger changes until the value progressively catches up with the knob's position. There are a few things worth knowing about these settings. All settings are automatically saved and will be restored the next time the module is powered on. Strange things happen when freeze is enabled. Because feedback or layering can no longer occur in the recording buffer, hey, it's frozen, we route the output signal through delays in all pass filters and let the feedback buildup occur in this extra recording space, giving the sound a very reverb-like nature. Advanced Topics Audio Quality Hold the Blend Parameter Audio Quality button for one second, then press it repeatedly to choose a recording quality. The current quality setting is indicated by a red LED. Have a look at the diagram below. Note that Cloud's 8-bit is a lovely flavor of 8-bit. Micro Law Companding it sounds like a cassette or a fair light, less hiss, more distortion. Saving and loading buffers. Up to four frozen audio buffers can be saved and reloaded. Along with the audio data itself, the quality settings and the processing mode are saved with it. To save the recording buffer in permanent memory, one, hold the load save button for one second. Two, Press the Blend Parameter Audio Quality button repeatedly to select one of the four memory slots. The selected slot is indicated by a blinking red LED. 3. Press the Load Save button to confirm. To load a recording buffer from permanent memory. 1. Press the Load Save button. 2. Press the Blend Parameter Audio Quality button repeatedly to select one of the four memory slots. The selected slot is indicated by a blinking green LED. 3. Press the Load Save button to confirm. 
If you press the load save button by mistake, do not press any button for a few seconds and the module will return to its normal state. Tips and tricks. If you need a noise source to randomize grain position or pitch, you could do worse than reusing one of the audio outputs. It's certainly not white noise, but it's random enough. Scratch and caress a sound by using a contact microphone or a touch strip to trigger grains and modify playback position. Very dense clouds sound the best when at least one parameter, pitch or position, receives random modulations. Otherwise, the many identical echoes created by the repeating grains will sound like a very resonant feedback comb filter. Raw material, like sawtooth or sine waves, sound very good, especially with heavy random modulation. A fun exercise is to recreate the classic THX sound with a random source and a VCA. Send a very fast sequence of three or four notes to the VO input, so that each grain, if sewn randomly, randomly picks one of those notes. The result? A chord. Experiment with capturing many small fragments of sound by sending short pulses to freeze while a complex patch is being played through the audio input. Calibration Procedure The module is factory calibrated using precision voltage sources. Follow this procedure only if you want to compensate for inaccuracies in your CV sources or if your module has lost its calibration settings following a fault or the installation of alternative firmware. To calibrate the unit, 1. Disconnect all CV inputs. 2. Connect the note CV output of a well-calibrated keyboard interface or MIDI CV converter to the voltage by octave input. 3. Press the load save button and while you hold it down, press the Blend Parameter Audio Quality button. The first two LEDs will blink in orange. 4. Play a C2 note, or send a 1V voltage from your CV source. 5. Press the Load Save button. The four LEDs will blink in orange. 6. Play a C4 note, or send a 3V voltage from your CV source. 7. Press the Load Save push button. 8. Calibration is done. Firmware Update Procedure Unplug all CV inputs and outputs from the module. Connect the output of your audio interface sound card to the in-left input. Power on your modular system with the freeze button pressed. The freeze LED will blink. Make sure that no additional sound, such as email notification sounds, background music, etc. from your computer will be playing during the procedure. Make sure that your speakers and monitors are not connected to your audio interface. The noises emitted during the procedure are aggressive and can harm your hearing. On non-studio audio equipment, for example the line output from a desktop computer, you might have to turn up the volume to maximum. When you are all set, play the firmware update file into the module. While the module receives data, the bar graph will show the signal level. Signal reception is optimal when two or three LEDs are lit. You can use the in gain knob to boost or reduce the gain. When the end of the audio file is reached, the module automatically restarts. If it is not the case, please retry the procedure. In case the signal level is too weak, the LEDs will blink in red. Press the freeze push button and retry with a higher gain. If this does not help, please retry the procedure from another computer or audio interface and make sure that no piece of equipment, equalizer, FX processor, is inserted in the signal chain. The Infinis Alternate Modes In its tumultuous teenage years, clouds tried to be everything, including a delay pitch shifter, a spectral processor, a projectionist, and a cab driver in ruin. This experimental code is still available in the module by pressing the B button for 5 seconds until one of the LEDs glows in orange, and then repeatedly pressing the button to select one of four functions. First LED lit, granular processor, normal operation. Second LED lit, pitch shifter, 
Time stretcher. Third LED lit. Looping delay. Fourth LED lit. Spectral processor. These features are experimental, undocumented, and the knobs might be reassigned to functions very different from what is printed on the panel. It is not recommended to use these alternate modes if you plan to let Tony Rolando come play with your system.